This week on History Talk, we're going to learn about some of Bismarck's firsts, including its first businesses, first schools, first movies, and traffic firsts, like the first traffic signal. History Talk streams exclusively Thursdays at 10 a.m. on KFYR+. Marshall Jewell and C.M. Dahl initiated the first effort to establish a Bismarck Public Library in 1893. Other efforts, including one led by Governor Hanna in 1901, also failed. Plans for Bismarck's first public library progressed in 1915, upon reorganizing the Commercial Club, which is today the Chamber of Commerce. One of its first acts was to appoint a library committee, who immediately corresponded with the Carnegie Foundation. At the time, Bismarck was North Dakota's only city with a population of more than 3,000 residents that didn't have a public library. A temporary city library consisting of 2,000 books, mostly community contributed, was established in the Commercial Club and formally dedicated on February 22, 1916. The original response from the Carnegie Foundation was discouraging. The funding offered was considered inadequate, due in part to the Foundation's perception that Bismarck was a small town. It took convincing the Foundation that Bismarck was larger and more important than its footprint in population suggested. Finally, the Foundation approved $25,000 for a public library in Bismarck. As a condition for receiving the grant, Bismarck was required to furnish a site and financially support the library at a cost of no less than $25,000 per year. Residents overwhelmingly approved their appropriations in spring 1916. The Carnegie Library would stand on Thayer Avenue, directly across from the Burley County Courthouse and next to the City Hall. Construction completed at the end of 1917. The existing library's contents were transferred on January 5, 1918, and the library was formally dedicated on February 22, 1918, the second anniversary of the public library's formal inception. The Veterans Memorial Library opened on July 8, 1963, replacing Carnegie Library. The new public library cost $375,000 to build. Its largest expansion and renovation concluded in 1989 at a cost of roughly $3.9 million, which excluded new furnishings or furnishing the basement meeting rooms. $3.5 million of that was financed, controversially, through the city's $17 million sales lease plan that also included a civic center expansion. The plan included a 1% sales tax increase, which was approved in 1986. The project added 50,000 square feet and renovated the original 18,000 square foot building and increased the library's capacity from 130,000 volumes to 250,000. The addition opened in summer 1988, at which point renovation commenced for the existing building. Several other renovations have followed, including in 2009 to the Children's Library. Using six projectors, the traveling Beattie Brothers premiered the first moving picture at the Bismarck Athenaeum, a stage house erected at 810 Main Avenue in 1883, and later called the Bijot Theater from about 1909. Sources vary somewhat on the year the first motion picture premiered in Bismarck, with one citing 1902 and another 1907. For sure, it happened as soon as 1903, as advertised in the Tribune on June 2nd of that year. The first Technicolor film was shown in 1928, and synchronized audio one year later in 1929. The first three-dimensional film premiered in Bismarck in 1953. Local movie theaters contained a single screen until the 1970s, beginning with Kirkwood Plaza's movie theater, becoming North Dakota's first to feature dual screens, later becoming the first in the state with three screens. After Kirkwood Mall's 1980 expansion, today, Grand Theater, Bismarck Mandan's lone movie house, contains 22 screens. For those who prefer to catch a movie beneath the stars from the comfort of their own car, Corral Theater was Bismarck Mandan's first drive-in theater. The Schultz Brothers of New England established the theater on April 22, 1949, premiering the film Home Stretch. Construction estimates were more than $70,000. The movie screen was 60 feet high, with the picture itself being roughly 42 feet by 31 feet. The 12-acre plot could accommodate 520 vehicles. Initial admission was 50 cents per person. The theater was located on the site now occupied by River City Sports and the neighboring Senex, corner of Rosser Avenue and Bismarck Expressway. At that time, one mile east of Bismarck city limits, Corral Theater closed in fall 1968. Another popular local drive-in was the Sundown Drive-In on the Strip, later known as the Starlight. 
Bismarck's first school was established by Linda Slaughter in August 1872 at Camp Hancock, then still called Camp Greeley. The following year, she became Bismarck's first superintendent. The first dedicated schoolhouse was built in 1878 at the site of 5th Street and Rosser. The Wheel School replaced this in 1905 on the same site. Today, this is the site of the Providence Building. Now let's look at some of Bismarck's transportation firsts, beginning with the first train, arriving on June 5, 1873 the day after the line reached Bismarck. Automobiles began appearing in Bismarck around 1909. That was the year that Miller and Lahr placed the first local automobile ad in the Tribune. It was a Ford Model T at a cost of $850. 1911 had the first vehicle registrations. At that time, there were 6,600 vehicles registered statewide. The first traffic signal was implemented at the corner of 9th Street and Main Avenue in 1939. That was the same year that speed limits were first implemented in city limits, but only on certain stretches of Main Avenue. The first intersection with dual left turn lanes was Washington and Expressway. While there was an attempt to fly an airplane from Morton County Fairgrounds to Bismarck as early as 1911, pilot Lucky Bob of Carrington was forced to make an emergency landing of his biplane Sweetheart before reaching the capital city. In Fargo, only a few days earlier, he did make what was likely the first successful airplane flight to North Dakota. It wasn't until 1916 that an airplane successfully flew over Bismarck, but Chicago aviator Daredevil Mills crashed upon landing east of the Capitol building. The plane flipped upside down, but was flying again by the very next day. Until sometime in the 1920s, local airplanes landed in a cow pasture across the street from what would later become Jerry's Supper Club on the Strip. It was then moved to the lowlands of South Washington Street, until today's Bismarck Airport first occupied its present-day site in 1931. Bismarck first paved its streets in 1916, three years after Manda. It consisted of 161 blocks spanning nine miles. The first section completed was Broadway Avenue between 2nd Street and 4th Street. This was paid by the city's first special assessment. Electricity first arrived in Bismarck in 1883. The Capitol was the first building lit by electricity, powered by an eight-light generator. In 1887, Bismarck and Burley County installed the first public street lights. In the following year, 1888, the Sheridan House became the first private building to be lit by electricity. Infamous political boss Alexander Mackenzie established Bismarck's public waterworks in 1886. He remained privately owned until his passing in 1923, when residents approved acquiring the waterworks and funding a filtration plant. Telephone arrived in Bismarck in 1901. Bismarck Tribune editor Marshall H. Jewell acquired the initial telephone exchange franchise. It was housed within the first National Bank building. The first electric elevator was at the Patterson when it opened as the McKenzie Hotel in 1911. One of Bismarck's J.C. Penney downtown locations was the first in the city to have an escalator when it was installed as part of a renovation in 1960. The first retail store was likely the Shaw & Cathcart store, which originally opened in nearby Carlton before Bismarck's location was finalized and later relocated into present-day Bismarck. The store was also the first bank in the region, with many deposits topping $1,000 in 1870s figures. Asa Fisher was an original partner in the store. Fisher would establish many other local businesses, finding significant wealth in liquor distribution. John Dunn opened Bismarck's first drugstore. It's possible this started as a general store in 1872 and only became a drugstore when Dunn got his druggist credentials the following year. His daughter, Fanny, would become North Dakota's first female doctor, and quite an accomplished one at that. John Yegan started Bismarck's first restaurant out of a tent. Yegan may also have been Bismarck's first hotel, in a sense, as he rented space to tenters for $9 a week. Yegan later became one of the region's primary dairy producers, which eventually sold to Land O'Lakes. Custer Park was Bismarck's first official park in 1909, but there were previous attempts to establish a local park. Depot Park was the biggest of these efforts, developed alongside the new train depot in 1901, but it wasn't an official city initiative. The adjacent Elks Pool was Bismarck's first municipal swimming pool, which opened in 1921. Mandan's first swimming pool, which was described as a, quote, natural pool, was formed by damming the Hart River in 1932. Two years later, Mandan dedicated its World War Memorial Building in October 1934. The basement contained what was then North Dakota's largest indoor swimming pool.
I invite you to check out my two Bismarck history books. They are available to purchase on Amazon and select local bookstores. Copies are also available at the Bismarck Public Library. Visit bismarckbook.com for more information. That was a look at some of Bismarck's firsts. Next, we'll learn about the history behind some of Bismarck Mandan's parks and pools. Is there a local history topic you'd like to be featured? Email historytalk at kfyrtv.com.